All right, so I've got a physics problem here that I wanted to run through. It's a tension problem. Let's take a look at this thing. So here's the question. It's about this hot air balloon here, uh, which is attached to the ground by two ropes, uh, both of which are at the same angle. And so the, the balloon's not moving, and we're given the force that's exerted on the balloon upward by the hot air inside of it, which is 2.15 times 10 to the third newtons, or 2,150. Newtons, and then we have the total mass of the balloon uh, given as well. And we are supposed to state the magnitude of the resultant force on the balloon when it's attached to the ground, and also calculate the tension in either of the fixing ropes. So, uh, the first thing I like to do when I have a question like this is to draw a free body diagram, which is this diagram that I've, that I've drawn here with the balloon in the middle and all of the forces that would be acting on it. So we're told about this upward force of 2150 newtons and there's going to be a, a downward force uh, from the mass of the balloon uh, which is going to be equal to ma its mass times the acceleration due to gravity and then the tension on the ropes is going to have to make up for the rest of the force to keep this thing still. So uh, first thing I did was calculate the downward force here. So it's just the mass of the balloon, which we're told is 195 kilograms times acceleration due to gravity, which is 9.8 meters per second squared. And that's going to give us this downward force of 1911. So you can see that it's kind of similar to the upward force being exerted, um, but not quite exactly the same. And the, and the first question A is asking us what is the resultant force on the balloon? Well, the balloon's not moving, uh, and force equals mass times acceleration, so if there's no acceleration, there's no resultant force. So the answer to the first part of this question is that F equals zero. Uh, there's, no, there's no force because the, the object's not in motion, and now we want to figure out what's keeping this thing from moving, which is that tension force on the fixing ropes. So that's part B. So the first thing that I found was the downward force. Uh, the total downward force. So I'm going to call that F of Y, uh, and it's actually not downward, it's upward, um, because the, the pulling force upward is stronger than the mass times acceleration in the downward direction. Um, but basically, so I'm, I'm subtracting the downward force from the upward force, and that's going to give me this remaining upward force of 239 newtons. Um, so the, the tension in the rope is going to have to is going to be responsible for the remaining force uh, downward to offset that and keep this thing from moving. Uh, so here's the picture of the balloon again. So if we're thinking about this downward force that's left over, um, we, we kind of can make a right triangle here. So this, this downward force that's left over is our uh, 239 newtons. And we have two ropes that are accounting for that. So if we're gonna, I'm gonna call this one, this one T1, uh, and this one T2. These aren't going straight down, but if we, we can kind of make a right triangle out of this, and, and any downward force is gonna make a right tri right angle with the ground. So this downward force um, is gonna be the sum of both of the tensions in the y direction. So T1y plus T2y is going to equal 293 or 239, sorry, newtons. So this equation is useful um, because even though we're, we're really trying to solve for one of these tensions, right? We're only looking for the tensions in one of these ropes. We actually know that these two tensions are going to be equal. And that's because this is an isosceles triangle that we're dealing with. Since both of the ba base angles are uh, 50 degrees, we know that these sides are the same. So whatever's happening to one rope is happening to the other one in exactly the same way. So we can actually use substitution here um, to sub... T, I'm, in, this, in this case, I'm just going to sub T2, T1Y in for T2Y. And in that case, we can get, we can just add these two together now because these are the same variable. And so 2 times T1Y is going to equal that 239 newtons. So the force of, this should be, of T1Y uh, is just this number divided in half. Um, and we're going to get 119.5 newtons. From here, we can actually draw a little triangle that just has the T1 force, right? So we have this 
right triangle uh, with a 50 degree angle in here and our T1 force is going to be the hypotenuse of that triangle and the value that we just found is this downward force which is 119.5 which is cool because we can solve this triangle using trigonometry uh, now that we know this this force on the opposite side of the 50 degree angle uh, and we're looking for the hypotenuse we're going to use sine to figure that out so sine equals opposite over hypotenuse so in this triangle the sine of our angle 50 degrees is going to equal our force of 119.5 uh, newtons over our t1 force which is our hypotenuse and then we can solve this pretty straightforward uh, just multiply by t1 on both sides and then divide by sine on, on both sides and you get this equation which you can just throw in your calculator and that's going to give you 156 newtons for the tension force in one of these ropes and that's pretty much it so yeah so when you have one of these one of, an equation like this with dealing with a bunch of different forces you want to draw yourself a free body diagram uh, figure out every possible force that's that's acting on whatever you're dealing with and draw those forces and just kind of tinker with it until you can figure out a, a relationship between the forces and solve it out uh, we were able to, since there were angles involved here, we had to use some trigonometry at the end, but uh, we were able to break down the forces into a Y component because the only forces that were acting on the balloon other than the tension forces were in the Y direction, so up and down. And we were able to take that and uh, turn that into this little triangle to find this angled force and use sine to figure it out. That's about it. Thanks for watching. Catch you later.